Hi guys, my name is Ian Crew. I'm an instructor at the Joy of Dance Center in Toronto, Ontario, and the creator of socialballroom.dance, where you can learn your dance at your place on your schedule. I'm joined here today by Agnieszka Kopa. Did I say it right? You did not. Kopka. Kopka. Ah, oh, jeez. I did it perfectly when we were doing the outtakes. Uh, anyway, Agnieszka yeah. is a fellow student here at the Joy of Dance Center. Uh, so very glad to have you with us. Uh, so why don't we start, if you could just let us know, you know, how long have you been dancing at the studio? Oh, uh, well, I started dancing about 15, 16 years ago, and I mm -hmm. danced on and off. I uh, started dancing at Arthur Murray Dance Studios, downtown Toronto. Right, right. And uh, then I stopped for a while, and then I uh, came back to Joy of Dance when it opened about 10 years ago or That's, so. yeah, about That's that. That's about right, yes. Right. And, and how far into this journey were you before you started you know, where you had the confidence to at least step in the door of dance socials? Well, you know, I, I attended the dance social right away, right? Mm -hmm. and, uh, but I oh, was, right from the beginning? Right like, from right the beginning, yeah, but, but oh, I wow. usually danced with, uh, with the instructors, right? Because I didn't, right. I didn't know any better, and the instructor that I worked with was able to lead me through the steps that I knew how to do, and mm -hmm, so on. Mm -hmm. um, and then I started attending dance socials more often, and uh, tried to do as many dance outings as possible with uh, made some friends and uh, and you know my confidence on the dance floor grew a bit my repertoire of steps grew as well <laughs> and uh, and then um, I think when I started competing was when when my confidence really really increased ah. and, I, and I learned how to be a follower and uh, and how to just get on that dance floor and enjoy nice nice do you still remember what your first social was like? Oh boy, that was a long time ago. Um, you know, like my first social was actually at Arthur Murray, and I danced mm -hmm. with uh, with an instructor then, and I learned how to dance salsa. That was the very first rumba and salsa. That was the very first dance that uh, that I learned, and uh, I learned maybe five patterns. And he invited me to come to this social. I had no idea what I was getting myself into. And it turned out we ended up performing our salsa routine. Oh my goodness! That consisted of five steps. On your first social, on my very first social you performed. I, 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 yes, I nearly died because I <laughs> I didn't know what I was getting myself into. He just said, "Oh, we're just going to dance." I'm like, "Okay, I'll go and come and dance." Oh and, <laughs> wow. and that's what happened. Yeah. <laughs> So that, wow, so you handled that incredibly well then. So, oh, you know. <laughs> but, and, and I guess it was like a ballroom social? It like was, with, yeah, okay. it was a ballroom social and you know, I, because I didn't know what I was getting myself into, mm -hmm. I just went out and danced, right? right and then right. after the fact I realized that, oh my goodness, I was actually performing in front of people. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, all these other people and are then, sitting down watching me. I right, thought they were going to come up right. and dance too. So, so you were just dancing with the one instructor the whole time? Yeah, yeah pretty much. Did that mean that you were sitting down for a lot of it as well? Oh yes, and watching other dancers, dancers and admiring them and mm -hmm. uh, wishing that I could move that way, right? And. Uh, and feeling that I never would be, right? So <laughs> So how did you get from there to actually starting to, you know, like I know you were saying that you sometimes even ask other leaders to dance, mm -hmm. which I personally think is awesome. I feel like I'd love it if more followers did that. Right. But yeah, how did you get there? So, you know, I think that uh, I, I got there only after I started dancing West Coast, really. Okay. Um, because, you know, the, the West Coast is a little bit different. Uh, to me, ballroom dance always was very traditional, very set in its ways and mm -hmm. so on. And you know, I felt that it was necessary for me to sit and wait for somebody to come and ask me to dance. Uh -huh. And then when I started des dancing West Coast, I've noticed that other ladies were coming up and, and asking uh, leaders to dance with them. And, uh, and I realized that it was okay. And you know, as my confidence grew, once again, I was able to be on that dance floor and um, ask people to dance with them. And also, uh, through going to classes and making yeah. friends and meeting people, you sort of knew that you were on dancing and practicing your skills. And, uh, and you know, I, I realized that it's not always about being perfect. It's right. about just enjoying yourself and, and realizing that on that social dance floor, everybody is there to practice and to have fun and just to let it go. And if you make a mistake, no one is going to remember it after Absolutely. the dance ends. 
Yeah. That, that's yeah, and that's inspiring. I I've always believed that mistakes are like the the steps that you take on mm -hmm. that journey, right? The mistakes are part of the lesson mm -hmm. of learning towards uh, towards improving yourself, mm -hmm. right? So yeah, if you try and just avoid mistakes, and you can't grow. So yeah. yeah. So so it sounds like you know as you when you saw other people doing it, mm -hmm. it, it sort of inspired you and gave you permission. To That's start it. asking yeah. others. Yeah. Now, did you were you asking people at ballroom socials as well, or was this more specifically West Coast? It was way? specifically West Coast, and with ballroom socials, I also, I, you know, I, I also learned how to lead because I did do some leading. Ah, when I did okay. The, the teacher training program, right, right. Which, which which I did just for my own benefit, was I never had any mm -hmm. intentions of teaching dance. It was just mm -hmm. for me to improve my my skills. Yeah. Um, but, you know, Did you find it helped you with your following? It, absolutely, absolutely. Uh -huh. It was probably one of the best things that I did. Pay attention to this, followers. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and now, you know, as 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 a follower, I can also lead. And there is mm -hmm. uh, in in social dance situations, we know that there are usually more followers than mm -hmm. leaders. That more than doubles your potential partners, right there. That's right. So you know, learning to lead, like you are not sitting, you are actually moving and having fun, and you yeah. are meeting people, and and once again, developing your confidence and your skill. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So I know that I mean I know you're saying ballroom dancing is is sometimes viewed as a rather traditional, mm -hmm. you know, the man does the asking and the lady right. accepts or doesn't right. accept. Um, and, did, and I know that some people can actually complain if they see other followers asking people to dance. Mm -hmm. Did you ever have that experience yourself? No, I have not experienced that oh, before. Okay. But, but what I did experience was that, you know, um, I also, so after I started asking people to dance with me and, mm -hmm. and uh, when I felt more, more confident on the dance floor, I realized that there are a lot of people who are new to dance, who just right. attend their first social and they may feel a little bit shy and all that. So um, I made an effort to go and ask those people to dance. Aww. And I did because, you know, I know what it felt like. And, yes. and some leaders would decline because they didn't feel <laughs> confident enough, which was fine, you know, I don't take mm -hmm. offense to it. Um, and I would also go and ask other followers who were newer to the dance yeah. to, to come and dance with me. And uh, I, they were often surprised that I would go and ask that, I love a that. woman to dance. But you know, <laughs> like it's just, uh, I think that uh, the more you dance and the more people you meet and the more comfortable you become, it's, mm -hmm. uh, you know, it's, it's okay. It's okay to... Did you ever, as a as a leader, mm -hmm. ask another follower to dance, and, and did they did, did they tell you no? I never experienced that. Followers always want to dance. <laughs> they always ready to go and do something. Yeah. So, and you know, um, one thing that uh, that is also very important in the, in the dance community is uh, studios like Joy of Dance. They mm -hmm. refer to in in ballroom dancing, they don't refer to traditional roles as right. men, ladies. It's uh, right. We try and, and stay very which inclusive, is very, very much yeah. so, and that's that's important. I think that's agreed. It breaks the, the, the barriers and mm -hmm, mm -hmm. absolutely. I keep. I hope things keep moving mm -hmm. in that direction as well. Yes. Yes. Were there any other uh, any other things that you did? So you were talking about how um, you got into competitions and that helped mm -hmm. to, to raise your confidence. Mm -hmm. um, were there any other sort of confidence boosting events throughout your, your dancing journey that, that helped you uh, with regards to socials? Uh -huh. Well, you know, so the competitions and also um, choreographed performances okay, helped yeah. as well because that, you know, you, you realize that you're just dancing for yourself and the audience is there to be entertained, but mm -hmm. uh, in the end, the audience never knows what your routine should look like. As Absolutely, long as you, yes. As long as you keep your frame, keep smiling, <laughs> and uh, you know, follow. <laughs> if you are a follower, it's, mm -hmm. and if you're you mess up a little bit, it's like, oh, what an interesting yeah, variation. And, and you are, that's right. And you are working with your partner. You are a team, right? You yes. Can, uh, trust each other, and yeah, and I think that this also helped. Awesome, awesome. Okay, well, I just have one more question. Mm -hmm. uh, is there any final words that you have for you know other dancers who are maybe a bit shy and uncertain about whether or not that they should go to a social right away mm -hmm. if they, they're worried about being laughed at or something? Someone once told me that the only limitations that you have are the ones that you place upon yourself. 
So, and you know, that sort of became my, my motto. And uh, don't be shy, even if you know a few steps, you know there are people in class with you who know the same number of steps. There are other people who know a few more, but you are out there to practice and to have fun. And, and really, in the end, it's all about the joy that dance brings to you. So don't compare yourself to other people. Never. Just focus on your own journey because that's where all that's the joy right. is. That's right. Awesome, awesome. Well, thank you so much for joining us today, Agnieszka. It was a real pleasure. Thank you. <laughs> so, and thank you very much, viewers, for, for watching. I hope this gave you some interesting food for thought. Uh, I, if you have any comments or questions, you can always message me on my Facebook fan page, Ballroom Dancers Anonymous, or you can email me at ian at socialballroom.dance. Again, that's ian at socialballroom.dance. I will see you next week, and until then, happy dancing. <laughs>